The primary job of branding is to transform a complex message into simple and clear communication. Brands are promises. More complete definitions follow, but as you venture into the world of branding, keep those three words and these three truths in mind. You establish your brand by building a trust in a one-of-a-kind promise. Your promise conveys who you are, what you stand for, and what unique and meaningful benefits you deliver. You build your brand by living up to your promise every time people come into contact with you, your name, your message, or your business. It makes no difference whether that contact is through a web search, your website, social media, advertising, publicity, word of mouth, the buying experience, customer service, billings, returns, or any other form of communication. Every encounter affects how others perceive your brand. You strengthen your brand by constantly reinforcing your brand promise. If encounters with your brand aren't in line with what people expected, those experiences essentially break your promise, breaking your brand, and risking your reputation as a result. Building brands takes focus, passion, persistence, and diligence. Plus, brand building requires effort and commitment. The payoff, and it's a big one, is that strong brands power personal and business success. We want to clear up a branding misconception. A logo isn't a brand. A logo is a symbol that represents a brand. Your brand isn't how you look or what you say or even what you sell. Your brand is what people trust and believe you stand for. For example, Starbucks sells coffee and increasingly other beverages. It stands for daily inspiration. Apple sells computers. It stands for thinking differently. Disney sells animated and amusement park family entertainment. It stands for imagination, wholesome fun, and making dreams come true. Your brand lives in consumer minds. Branding is the process of developing consumer beliefs and perceptions that are accurate and in alignment with what you want your brand to be. Brands create consumer trust and emotional attachments. As a result, they foster relationships between customers and products that withstand pricing wars, transcend offers from new competitors, and even overcome rare lapses in product or service excellence. Great brands aren't just known and trusted. They're loved. Brands make selling easier. People prefer to buy from companies they feel they know and can trust. Brands put forth that assurance. Remember, whether you're selling products to consumers, investment opportunities to stockholders, job opportunities to applicants, freelance or consulting services to clients, or ideas to constituents, a brand paves the way for success by establishing positive awareness of your unique and meaningful promise before you ever present your sales proposition. When people are aware of your brand and its unique and positive attributes, they understand what you stand for and what unique value they can count on you to deliver. As a result, when it comes time to make a sale, brand owners can concentrate on the wants and needs of the consumer because they don't need to explain themselves. Without positive brand awareness, you have to build a case for the value you deliver every single time you get ready to make a sale. While brand owners are closing the deal, those without strong brands are still introducing themselves. In the marketplace, you have either a one-of-a-kind brand or a one-is-as-good-as-any-other commodity. Brands are products defined by and chosen for their unique distinguishing attributes and promise. Consumers are willing to spend extra effort and money to obtain the brands they believe in. Commodities are products that are easy to substitute and hard to differentiate. Oil, coffee beans, wheat flour, and milk are commodities. Consumers buy commodities because they meet minimum standards and are available when and where they're needed and at the lowest price. Only commodity items that are distinguished by a unique attribute and promise, think of Pillsbury flour as an example, develop into strong brands. 
Brands that are preferred and valued by consumers deliver a long list of business benefits that translate to higher sales, higher profit margins, and higher owner value. Consider these brand advantages as proof. People are willing to pay more to buy brands that they believe deliver outstanding and desirable benefits. This is true for business brands, product brands, and personal brands. Consumers stay loyal to brands, buying them more often, in greater volume, and without the need for promotional incentives. Retailers provide brands greater store visibility because they know that brands drive sales and result in higher store revenues. Brand owners can grow their business by leveraging their brands into product and line extensions rather than having to introduce new products from scratch. Brand owners find it easier to attract and retain good employees because applicants believe in the quality of the workplace based on advanced knowledge of the caliber of the brand. Brand owners run more efficient operations because they align decisions with the mission, vision, and values that underpin the brand promise. Brand owners benefit from increased market share, increased investor support, and increased company value. With more new business and products than ever before, and with a competitive arena that, thanks to the Internet, stretches all the way around the world, brands are more necessary today than ever before. Here are a few of the reasons why. Remember, brands unlock profitability. Today's marketplace is full of more products than ever before, and overwhelmed by the selection, people choose and pay premium prices only for products they've heard of, trust, and believe deliver higher value than the others. If consumers think all products in a category are virtually the same, and no offering is better or distinctly different from the others, they simply grab whichever one is available at the lowest price. That's a profit-squeezing reality that brand marketers gratefully avoid. Brands prompt consumer selection. For the first time in shopping history, consumers can shop and buy without any geographic limitation. The Internet and other at-home shopping options allow far-reaching access to any product, anywhere. With a few clicks or keystrokes, consumers find and select products with names they know and promises they trust. In this boundless marketplace, brands rule, and no-name products barely survive. Brands build name awareness. For good reason, new businesses and products increasingly go by invented names instead of by known words. For one thing, more than three million U.S. trademarks are already registered, so any marketer who wants to protect a new name practically needs to create a never-before-seen word in order to succeed. For another, 99% of all words in the English dictionary are already reserved as Internet addresses and are therefore unavailable to new marketers. As a result, most new offerings are launched under invented names, and invented names require strong and diligent brand development in order to achieve consumer awareness, recall, and meaning. Brands increase the odds of business survival. New businesses and new products are being launched at an unprecedented pace. Only those that ride into the market on the strength of an established brand, or those that are capable of building a brand name in a hurry, can seize consumer awareness, understanding, and preference fast enough to survive. Brands have been around for centuries, but they've never been more important or more essential to business success than they are today. People confuse branding with designing a logo, or they think branding is a matter of creating a great website, great ads, and consistently great marketing messages. But branding is way more than any of that. Following are some need-to-know terms. Brand The essence and idea of what you stand for. Your brand starts with a vision and grows into a promise about who you are and what you stand for that gets reinforced every time people come in contact with any facet of your business or organization. Brand Identity The name and visual marks that present your brand, 
usually in the form of a logo, symbol, or unique type style, as well as all other identifying elements including colors, package shape, even sounds and smells associated with your brand. Brand Image The beliefs about what your brand is and what it stands for that exist in the customer's mind as a result of all encounters, associations, and experiences with any aspect of your business or organization. Branding The process of building positive perceptions in your customer's mind by consistently presenting the vision and idea of your brand so others understand and believe what you stand for and the promise you invariably make and keep. Brand Position How your brand fits in with and relates to various other brands within your competitive market. Brand Management Controlling the presentation of your brand identity, message, and promise across your entire organization and through all communication channels, and protecting your brand identity against infringement or misuse. Brand Equity The value of your brand as an asset based on its qualities, reputation, recognition, and the demand, loyalty, and premium pricing it generates. In branding, consistency is the single most important ingredient for success. Here's why. If you bring consistency to your branding program, you build a brand that stands head and shoulders, no branding pun intended, above the others. If you have a clear and passionate vision about what you stand for and project messages to your target market that constantly reinforce how your offering is different and relevant, you build knowledge and eventually esteem. As a result of your consistency, you win out over businesses that shift with the wind, regardless of how beautifully they've polished their identities or their marketing materials. Branding is a circular process that involves these actions. 1. Product Definition You can brand products, services, businesses, people, or personalities. The process starts by defining what you're branding and whether your brand will be your one and only or one of several in your organization. 2. Positioning Each brand needs to fill a unique, meaningful, and available spot in the marketplace and in the consumer's mind. To determine your brand's point of difference and the unique position it, and only it, fills in the marketplace. 3. Promise The promise you make and keep is the backbone of your brand and the basis of your reputation. 4. Presentation How you present your brand can make or break your ability to develop consumer interest and credibility in your offering. Start with a great name and logo and then launch communications that establish your brand, convey a compelling message, engage your audience, and foster the kind of two-way brand communication and interaction demanded by screen-connected and empowered consumers. 5. Persistence This is the point in the branding cycle where too many brands lose steam. After brands are established, brand owners often begin to improvise with new looks, new messages, and even new brand personalities and promises. Just when consistency is most necessary in order to gain clarity and confidence in the marketplace, brands that lack persistence go off track. 6. Perception Analysis In a consumer's mind, which is where brands live and thrive, a brand is a set of beliefs about what you offer, promise, and stand for. Great brands continually monitor brand perceptions to see that they're in alignment with the brand owner's aspirations and in sync with consumer wants and needs. Based on the results of perception analysis, brand owners begin their loop around the branding cycle again, this time adjusting products, fine-tuning positioning statements, strengthening promises, updating presentations, rewriting brand management rules, and once again, monitoring perceptions in preparation for brand realignments 
and revitalizations. A brand is the essence and idea of what you stand for. It starts with a vision and grows into a promise that's reinforced every time people come into contact with you or any facet of your business or organization. Branding is the process of positioning, packaging, and presenting the vision and idea of your brand so that others understand and believe what you stand for and the promise you invariably make and keep. Branding isn't a veneer that you slap on, usually in the form of a new logo, to mask or transform a product offering. Treating branding like some skin-deep solution is like putting lipstick on a pig. People see through the makeup. Instead, successful branding goes all the way to the core of who you are and what you stand for. When it does... It signifies, simplifies, clarifies, unifies, and magnifies what you are and do, and it adds considerable value as a result. More than any other quality, even more than strong financial statements, great management, or terrific product or service ideas, brands are the key to winning long-term growth and success. By building a brand, you cast a strong, clear vision of what you stand for. Without a brand, you blur into a dime a dozen one seems just like another category called commodities. In a sea of similar choices, branding differentiates and elevates your offering, paving the way for awareness, preference, selection, and profitability. If you can think of even one way your offering is meaningfully different and better, not just different, but meaningfully different and better, then you have at least one reason to build a brand that moves it into the prestigious realm of people, products, businesses, and organizations that stand out as distinctly different, preferable, and more valuable than all the others. Commodities are offerings that customers can't differentiate from one another because they all seem to serve the same need, solve the same problem, and deliver the same value. If people can't see a clear reason to buy one product over another, if they think that they all deliver the same value and quality, they buy whatever's available at the lowest price, which is hardly a formula for business success. Brands are the opposite of commodities. A commodity becomes a brand when those in the marketplace understand and value compelling characteristics that make it different and better than others in its category. Branding is a powerful tool that differentiates an offering in ways that develop consumer preference and deliver pricing power, the power to raise prices without losing business. Airline tickets, laptop computers, and strawberry jam start out as commodities. All competitors address basically the same need in basically the same way. And if customers see no reason to choose one over the others, they simply opt for the one with the lowest price. Yet every day, customers make conscious decisions to buy the offering of one airline or computer manufacturer or jam maker over the others because of the unique attributes they trust to be true about their choice. Maybe they're won over by the frequent flyer club options, service or warranty program, organic ingredients, or any of a zillion other distinguishing characteristics. The brand promises that they understand and believe are worth premium pricing. Your brand reflects the vision of the good that you aim to achieve. Just as the images on a country's flag symbolize the core of what's important to that culture and nation. Your brand reflects the core of what's important to you and your organization. It's the banner that signifies what you're passionate about, your fundamental values, what you aspire to achieve, and the promise on which you stake your reputation. A well-defined vision is important whether you're building a personal brand or an organizational brand. If you're developing a personal brand, 
Your vision clarifies the qualities and characteristics for which you want to be known. It keeps you on track and steers the presentation of an authentic, well-aligned voice and presentation in all personal communications, whether online and offline. If you're developing a product, business, or non-profit brand, your vision defines, for every person in your organization, why you're doing what you're doing and the ultimate good you want to achieve through your success. Establishing a clear vision keeps your entire team on track and makes branding an almost transparent process. You don't have to tell people why upholding the brand promise is important. By understanding the long-term vision you're working to achieve, the brand promise becomes a commitment that's caught, not taught, throughout the organization. Great brands stem from the beliefs, personalities, and values of those leading the brand. They result in a brand culture that's authentic and heartfelt. Amid a deluge of unfamiliar options, brands stand out as friends you can count on. That trust leads to selection, purchase, and for the brand builder, profitability. Instinctively, you've proven the influence of brand trust thousands of times over. Think of the last time you reviewed job applicants, or scrolled through screen after screen of shoe choices, or scanned reviews for movies playing in town. You had to make a choice, and chances are good that you opted for the offering you thought you could trust. Branding or lack thereof, led to your selection. If you viewed all the choices as similar and fairly risk-free, you probably let convenience or low price tip your decision. That's because no single offering inspired your trust or presented distinguishing benefits, so you went with the quickest, least expensive option. But if, after scanning all your options, you settled on an offering that took you out of your way or caused you to pay a little or a lot more. Your decision was likely based on a sense that the one you selected was worth the price or the trouble because you believed it wouldn't let you down. That trust, almost certainly, was the result of good branding. You can build a brand for a product or service, a small or huge company, or a non-profit organization. You can build a brand for yourself, called a personal brand. Products are tangible, physical items that you can hold in your hands or see with your own eyes before you make the purchase. If a product lacks any perception of distinct quality or value, it's known as a commodity. Think salt. When a manufacturer wins awareness in the marketplace that its product has characteristics that make it different and better than others in the product category, that commodity turns into what's known as a consumer brand. Branding is a powerful way to differentiate a product in ways that create consumer preference and premium pricing. People buy services sight unseen. Unlike tangible, three-dimensional products that shoppers can see and feel and try out before buying, or at least look at on your website, people buy services purely based on their trust that the person or business they're buying from will deliver as promised. If you sell a service or run a service business, you absolutely, positively need to develop and manage a strong brand image for the following reasons. People buy your service based entirely on their belief in your brand promise. People need to have faith in you, your ability, and your reputation before they decide to commit their business. Before signing on the dotted line to purchase a service, customers need to believe that their expectations will be met. If they know nothing about you or lack confidence in the quality of your service, they'll take their business elsewhere. Examples of globally recognized service brands include Google, eBay, H&R Block, Charles Schwab, and FedEx. For examples of local-level service brands, think of your region's leading law firm, best hair salon, most innovative home builder, or most trusted medical clinic. 
Each earned its reputation by building a clear identity and consistently conveying a believable promise that people trust in while they wait for the purchase service to be performed and their high expectations to be met. Many large companies and corporations build product or service brands in addition to their business brands. Procter & Gamble, for example, has a corporate brand in addition to a portfolio of consumer brands. On a smaller scale, you probably can think of a local land developer that builds product brands for each new residential community, in addition to a brand for the land development company that holds the individual brands. If you build only one brand, and that's the advice we give to any business with limited marketing expertise or budget, build a business brand. Because business brands accomplish the following. Lead to awareness, credibility, and good reputations. Pave a smooth road for product introductions. Inspire employees. Attract the interest of job applicants, investors, and business reporters. Contribute to customer preference for your products and services, often accompanied by a willingness to pay more for the association with a leading, high-esteem business. Personal brands reflect personal reputations. They differentiate individuals by creating awareness of who they are, what they stand for, what they do best, and how they contribute to the world around them. By developing your personal brand, you establish yourself for your expertise, enhance visibility, develop preference, gain influence, and power success toward your personal goals. You prepare yourself to take every opportunity to make a great first impression. Personality brands are personal brands gone big time. They're individual brands that are so well known that they not only become celebrities, think Oprah. Kobe Bryant, Donald Trump, and, like him or not, any of the Kardashians, but also create significant value when associated with products or services. For example, think of George Foreman, David Beckham, Beyonce, LeBron James, and a long list of other celebrities who launch or endorse product brands. But personality brands aren't exclusively for the uber-famous and ultra-rich. For example, Community leaders become local personalities whose endorsements of projects or fundraising campaigns turn otherwise obscure efforts into overnight successes. Whether you aspire to be a successful job applicant, a sought-after speaker, or a star in your community or industry, start by building a personal brand. Branding starts before most brand builders even know it. As soon as people form an opinion about you or your business, product or service, perhaps based on real-world or online encounters you don't even realize are happening, they form the basis of your brand image in their minds, which is where brands live. Branding is the process that aligns the opinions people hold about your brand with the image you want them to believe. Step 1. Decide what you're going to brand. Are you branding a product, a service, a company, or an individual? As part of your decision about what you're going to brand, you need to decide if the brand you're developing will be your one and only, or if it will live alongside or under the umbrella of other brands in your organization. Step 2. Do your research. When you're clear about what you're branding, the next step is to analyze your offering and the market in which it will compete. Think of this as your discovery phase, which is comprised of two major steps. 1. Find out everything there is to know about your market. Begin by researching your prospective customers, who they are, where they are, and what motivates their buying decisions. Then analyze your competition to discover what solutions already exist in the marketplace and exactly how the offering your branding is different and better. 2. Find out everything there is to know about your product or service. You need to know what makes your offering unique, 
what attributes make it excel over competing alternatives, and how it solves your customers' wants or needs. Step 3. Position your product or service. Positioning defines how you'll differentiate your brand and how you'll slot it into an available space in the market and in customer minds. Determining your brand's position is an essential early step in the branding process because people will make mind space for your offering only if you can convince them in a split second that you provide unique solutions to problems or needs that aren't already being addressed by competing solutions. To determine your market position, follow these four steps. 1. Determine which distinct and meaningful consumer needs or desires only your product or service addresses in the marketplace. Don't try to take an already established position away from a competitor unless you have the budget, expertise, and time to do so. 2. Communicate your point of difference. 3. Win a unique position for your offering in the market and in the consumer's mind. 4. Perform so well that no competitor can compete against or unseat your position. Step 4. Write your brand definition. Your brand definition is a true statement about what your brand stands for. It describes what you offer, why you offer it, how your offering is meaningfully different and better, the unique benefits your customers can count on, and the promise or set of promises you make to all who work with and buy from your business. You have to know your brand definition before you begin to develop and project the public presentation of your brand. Otherwise, the external face of your brand, everything you present through marketing efforts, won't match up with the internal base of your brand, and your brand will lack credibility. Picture an iceberg to represent the relationship between the base and face of your brand. The external face of your brand rises into public view in the form of your name, logo, website, ads, packaging, promotions, and marketing message that everyone from employees to consumers, suppliers, friends, and colleagues can quickly and easily see, understand, and believe. Like the tip of the iceberg, the face of your brand is only a representation of the larger brand base that lies out of consumer view. The internal base of your brand is the substance of what your brand is and stands for. It includes your services, products, culture, mission, vision, and values, as well as the leadership, management, and organization that together create the strong basis for your brand. Step 5. Develop your name, logo, and tagline. This is the point where branding gets exciting. The minute you give your brand a name and a face, or logo, you can watch managers, employees, and others inside the company start to buy into the branding process. Here's a brief introduction to these important brand elements. Name. Your name is the key that unlocks your brand image in your consumer's mind. Logo. Your logo is the mark or symbol that serves as the face of your brand on your signage, packaging, stationery, websites, advertising, sales material, and every other communication vehicle that carries your name into the marketplace. Tagline Your tagline is the memorable phrase that provides consumers with a quick indication of your brand position and promise. Some marketers make their taglines an essential part of their identities, whereas other marketers don't create taglines at all. Taglines are particularly useful, though, for brands with names or logos that don't clearly convey their brand position or personality, and for businesses that rely heavily on communications in which logo presentation isn't possible. Step 6. Launch Your Brand your brand launch happens in two phases and in this order. 1. 
Internal launch. Whether you're launching a new brand or relaunching a revitalized brand, be sure to launch from the inside out. Before you even think of introducing your brand to prospects, explain it to all the people who have or feel that they have a stake in your business, including the following shareholders, managers, and employees. These are the people most invested in your business and most apt to serve as ambassadors for your brand. Be ready to answer questions like, Why are we spending money on this? And how will this strengthen our business? By linking your branding program to your business mission and goals. By all means, take extra care with those who sell your product, providing them with a complete set of tools to help them present your brand position and story to prospects and customers. Key Partners and Major Customers Before loyal supporters and clients see your new or revised brand identity on packaging or in ads, give them a preview. 2. External Launch Your brand goes public when you unveil your name, logo, and slogan, and when you begin to tell your market the story of how your brand reflects what you stand for. Step 7. Manage, leverage, and protect your brand. This is the care and feeding phase of the branding process. This stage also requires the most persistence, and it's where too many brands lose steam. Just like good parenting, good branding management can be summed up in a single word. Consistency. Display a consistent look. Project a consistent message and tone. Deliver a consistent level of quality through all communications, products, and services. Be diligent about consistently protecting your brand from misuse. Stay consistently true to your brand. Begin managing your brand from the moment you introduce it for the following reasons. The minute your name or news of your offering enters the marketplace, you begin making first impressions of your brand, whether they're the ones you intend to make or not. By etching your brand onto a blank slate in the marketplace, you don't have to undertake the difficult task of erasing erroneous impressions and rewriting your brand image. Step 8. Realign your brand to keep it current. When you hear people talk about their, or your, need to rebrand, think long and hard before tuning into the conversation or signing them on as your branding consultants. In all but the most extreme cases, when people talk about rebranding, what they really need is a brand update, also called a brand refresh or a brand realignment. Rebranding involves abandoning the essence of what a brand stands for and starting from scratch to build a brand new brand. Rebrands are rare and costly and should be approached only with the greatest of care. Brand realignments begin with the recognition that your brand is the essence of what you or your business stands for. You can't just change essence. You can't just change your brand. What you can and should be willing to change is how your brand is presented. Market trends and conditions change. Purchase behaviors change. Design looks or cultural aesthetics change. When they do, brand realignments refresh your brand by updating its look and message, but not by changing the essence of the brand or the brand promise.